brought to you by fantasyhurling.ie and fantasygaelicfootball.com. Enter now and win over €2,300 worth of prizes. Delighted to say I'm joined by Jack Nolan of Midlands Radio. Myself and Jack have covered a game uh, or two in the past uh, when Leash went on that great run in 2019, famously the Dublin match down in O'Moore Park. Jack, how's things with you? Very good, very good. Looking forward to getting out and uh, watching a few games again and commentating. Yeah, it's brilliant. Absolutely. Joe, you know just to jump straight into the Leash hurlers, um, you must have thought what's going to happen next when we had the situation with Eddie Brennan leaving over the winter. What was it? What was it like? You as uh, obviously you're you're, you're uh, looking on at the team and you're hoping for the best with them every year. But when you saw that happening, given the very good 2019 and this, I suppose there were some good signs in 2020 pushing Clare all the way. What were you thinking when that happened? Well, at the time it happened, I was absolutely devastated myself as a Leash supporter, apart from being a commentator, and uh, because I thought Eddie was really doing well, uh, and I thought there was prospects there. He had a tough year last year uh, with injuries. And, uh, you know, then for it to come as it did, it was a bombshell. Now, having said that, uh, to have a man like Cheddar coming in and his place and to be ready-made for the job and have been there before, I think was a bonus. But uh, I still think, you know, you would have liked to have seen Eddie at least get one more year out of it and uh, see where he could take them. And do you feel that, you know, in terms of who came in, that Cheddar is the one man who would have united the clans because, like yourself, it seemed a lot of people were very, very upset with the way things went and thinking that you'd lost a very good manager. Well, I don't think there would have been a queue up to replace uh, Eddie, you know, of potential high-class or high-powered inter-county manager. So uh, to have Cheddar there, who was obviously willing to go, uh, finished on a maybe a, a sour note the previous time he was with Leash, but, you know, went off, did his work, uh, was attending every leash game from under 40 and upwards. Uh, I've seen him at them all. And uh, so he was the man. He was the perfect fit, I suppose, for the job. But, you know, the way the year has went with the pandemic, it's a really tough start for him. And the fact that, you know, the type of work that Cheddar does, he would have liked to have been working with him uh, man to man or, uh, you know, certainly as a group for the last four or five months. And instead, he's gone straight in now into a league campaign with maybe just two weeks worked on. So it's not ideal. And, uh, you know, it, it's a tough one for him and it's a tough one, particularly the way the, the league and the championship has set out this year. And before we maybe jump on to what's going to happen this year, how do you reflect on, on the last two years? So the progression of these players, because they were from, coming from, I suppose, like at times over the years, Leash have been at low ebbs. But 2019 beat Dublin, decent performance against Tipperary. Then last year, beaten heavily by Dublin in the Leinster Championship. Bit of a revenge one there for Dublin. And then started off not brilliantly against Clare. Always in the game, but then the red card and Leash made a great push and could have nearly pipped Clare uh, for a finish in that game. So where do you think Leash, as a group of hurlers, are at? Well, coming from where they were, I suppose, the first year with Eddie, winning the Joe McDonough was a major achievement for them, you know, because they were pretty much rock bottom, uh, you know, after the previous couple of years. And then, as you say, they did clear the uh, Dublin game, which was a huge success for them. Uh, and I suppose, first of all, you know, to win the Joe McDonough Cup, uh, they put the Joe McDonough Cup up, I suppose, a few steps higher than it had been before. They celebrated afterwards and they brought the cup around the same. It was a, uh, as a major trophy and, and all of that. And then, as you say, beat Dublin, uh, had a fair run against Tipperary, so it was a promising year and a lot of work had been done. Everyone was waiting for him to come back last year. But unfortunately, you know, for Eddie Middy's point of view, from Leach's point of view, they were struck with injuries. And uh, a couple of lads went away and a couple of injuries and all of that. And I suppose when they played Dublin last year, I think there was only eight of the team that played Dublin the previous year playing. And that was, you know, you know from Eddie's point of view, it must have been demoralising because he had to bring in players who he probably hadn't... Uh, thought about bringing in and uh, to miss I suppose, over half a team in within 12 months was a huge blow. Mm. And then if you look ahead to this year, the injuries seem to be mounting up already for Cheddar and he's only had the players oh, for oh, a handful of sessions. You know, like Mark Cavanagh is out for the season, Ronan Broderick, Eric Killeen, Stephen Picky Maher, Willie Dunphy, they could be out for a while. Ian Alliance hasn't been back training yet. John Lennon is a couple of weeks away. Now he does have Chad Dwyer, PJ Scully and I think Kieran Collier is back. But that's a lot of players to be down. It's the same thing again, really. You know, and you, I interviewed Mike Quirk last week about the footballers, and Mike was saying he had 32 lads in 
and 32 lads fit. He had no injury worries, you know. And I, I didn't realise that maybe two days after that, the Cheddar was in such a, a position as in. You know, as you say, Mark having a huge, huge loss. Uh, he's been carrying injuries to his shoulder, to his groin, to his knee for the past two years. I think Cheddar said to him right off this year, go get yourself looked after. But then Ronan Broderick, who came into the squad last year, was so impressive. Eric Killeen, who has been struggling for two or three years. And then Picky Mara and Willie Dunphy. Then Yvain Alliance, as you mentioned, who is, uh, has been out since the Dublin game, I think, two years ago. Uh, got the uh, knee done, cruciate done, and all of that. And his first night back training and pulled a hamstring. So it's not looking good. You're in a similar situation now. Um, you know, but they've been working hard off the field, as all teams have. Uh, played a, an A versus B game there on Saturday evening, which I think the B team won by a couple of points. So, you know, just a few days, uh, I think it was Monday even actually, and a few days before they play Wexford, um, you know, probably focuses his mind on what maybe his starting 15 will be. What do, what do you want to see from Leash this year, both in terms of hurling style and, is, you know, it is, it is tough up at the top, both in the league and in the championship. So the idea of saying, I want to get a right good run and, and, and win stuff is probably maybe a bit early in, in the trajectory for this team. But what do you want to see in terms of development? Well, I suppose from a Cheddar's point of view, he always wants to improve and to improve the standard. Now, when he was there before, he was always looking for the big scalp, you know, and he never got the big scalp. He got close. He was at, you know, he got close. He got close and went very, very close against Galway in particular. But he never got that big scalp that he was looking for. And Eddie came in, and if you call Dublin a big scalp, he at least got the big scalp and, you know, went on and, and, and pressed some of the bigger teams very, very close indeed. And I almost got clear, as we had said last year. But... With the panel he has, he has a couple of new players in. There's a chap called David Dooley uh, from Rose Nallis, who, who was playing, I suppose, on the first team on, on Monday evening. And it's possible now that he may play senior inter-county uh, hurling before he plays senior county hurling for his club. Rose Nallis, who did so well in the league championship last year. So he's coming straight out of minor ranks. Um, but And he has a few more younger age players like that as well. But I suppose the main thing, uh, and the fear, I suppose, would be, as I said, Having won the Joe McDonough Cup and celebrated it two years ago, uh, a real failure would be would be to drop back down to Joe McDonough Cup standard again. Uh, let it be this year, let it be next year, let it be any year. So it's all about maintaining the, the status and being able to push the top teams, push them and uh, possibly beat them. And do you think mentally Leash are in a good place where they feel they can challenge some of the top teams? And I wouldn't say Limerick, Tipperary, like the, the teams that are will feel that they can push for the All-Ireland. But do you think in terms of championship standard, they feel that they can push an awful lot of those teams? Well, I think they will because, you know, they've done pretty well over the past two years with Eddie. And I know from a poll that was taken uh, immediately after Eddie's departure, I think 99% of the players opted for Cheddar to come in. Players who have worked with him before, they know he's a hard task master. They know, you know, his, but his, his, his management and his... Uh, all of his organisation is absolutely second to none. Now, he's a very strong backroom team in him this time as well. Uh, not many local people in that, but uh, that, you know, he has coaches, he has defensive coaches, he has forward coaches. And uh, I, I think he, from a team effort outside, I just think it's a pity that they've only been worked in two weeks as uh, that's starting off. And, uh, you know, maybe some people would say if you, this year, if you could maintain their status in, the, in the Division 1, uh, if they could maintain their status in the Leinster Senior Hurling Championship for this year, I think uh, that would be a, a, a good year. I think that would be a successful year. And then the work that they put in the, this year, bring it forward into uh, next year. So it's going to be uh, Wexford starting out both the league and the championship. That's a tough draw in the Leinster Championship. Do you, do you feel that with all the injuries that you're... S- a little bit concerned going into this game at the weekend against Wexford, almost looking through your fingers? Well, it's hard to know. As I said, the lads have done an awful lot of work. Uh, there's players who are working in great shape maybe over the last year or two, uh, physically who are in mighty shape now, but then ha- missing six or seven players, but we'll be all looking for starting places. It's going to be a real tough one. Wexford away next uh, Sunday. Uh, a home to Dublin then, which will be, as I said, looking for a bit of revenge. That, that's a game, I suppose, both teams will be targeting to win and it'll be hugely important. But if, if Leash could win that one, that'll be a big one. That's at home in the Moor Park. 
Then they're at home to Clare the following week, who they ran so close last year. So, you know, Wexford is a daunting task. But the next two games, Leash have heard so well against them in the last two years. They won't be daunted by either of them. And then the big one, the following week, they're away to Kilkenny. And the final one is a massive trip, as it always is, away to Antrim. But I suppose the games that Leash would hope to do well in would be that Dublin and Clare game. So, having watched Leash a, a nice bit in the last few years, but it's, and even like clubs watching Rat Downey Earl, for example, going on that uh, good run a couple of years ago, and that great game they had against Mullins, it seems to me that the Leash players never lack hurling. Like, you have some brilliant stick men in there. Do you think it is the physical aspect? You mentioned a couple of players weren't in brilliant shape last year, and even watching the Dublin game, I was thinking there's a couple of guys here, they look more club physique than county physique. That's not trying to be insulting, but that was just... The flavour I got from it. So, is it physically that where Leash need to make up a bit of ground? I think so. You know, when you're when you're dealing with the big boys now, you have to be very, very physical, and that's the way the game has gone. Uh, aerial duels are vital, and it's something that Leash have been lacking. You know, be, be, being able to, to catch the ball in the air is something that Leash are only learning to do now. Teams it has developed into a hugely important part of the game, where you know the Limericks and the Wexfords and the Waterfords and all of those can literally take the ball out of the sky. And that is something they have worked on. But I think, you know, under Eddie, certainly Leash's hurling was a bit more free-flowing and a bit more adventurous. In previous years, they were very conservative. It was maybe all about damage limitation, uh, playing an extra man or two men in defence, holding on to possession, not giving away possession. And it really didn't work, and it didn't work into scores. While I think in under Eddie, big scores were being put up as well. Maybe big scores were being conceded in some of the games, but that's modern than hurling, you know. Any of the top teams can score, you know, 228 against 224, and that's the way it's gone with uh, any of the teams. But I think, you know, I think the, the, the style of leash hurling had changed under Reddy, and uh, I think, you know, it's it's with, with um, Cheddar and his backroom team, who are a formidable team, uh, it's up to them to develop that and bring it onwards. And how important is it to have the likes of Chad Wire, or PJ Scully, Kieran Collier? How much can they add to the team, especially with the injuries that have that have occurred? Well, I think Chad was a huge loss last year. First of all, he opted out of the panel because he was going to go travelling, I think, to Australia and far flung places. Uh, then there was uh, he had a bereavement, and it was put off, and then the lockdown came, so he didn't go. He came back training. And uh, himself and Eddie never really saw eye to eye. So when he looked to come back into the panel, Eddie didn't bring him back in. And I think he was a huge loss. He is a huge loss. Now, I saw him recently and he's in great shape. He's in the best shape I've seen him in in years because he really has trained and a good off season. Um, Kieran Collier was hurler of the year three years ago uh, for Cameras County Hurler of the Year, got the award and then didn't play for Leash. Man was heavily involved in farming, big farming, up in cameras in the mountains, and just I think decided to opt out and look after that. Uh, back in the panel now, but uh, you know I think his lack of intercounty hurling over the past two years is going to stand against him. Cameras didn't have extended runs in the championship either, so you know it'll take him a while to get back up to the pace of the game. Um, so it, it's going to be tough. But I think Cha PJ Scully is a player who, you know, has has uh, hasn't played a lot of intercounty hurling maybe for the past five or six years. Yeah, after that under Raymond Kelly and uh, wasn't involved then under Eddie Brennan for much of it, for very, very little of it, in fact. So, but he's, he's top scorer in the county, top scorer for his club, deadly around the goal. So he's certainly a huge addition to the forward, forward uh, to the attack. Hmm. But, you know, as we said, for Leash to progress, they need every player that's available fit and ready. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Kieran Collier and the the farming. There's a lad down home. He once didn't go into the tip panel because he was doing silage. He didn't go in for a trial. So uh, I think that's yeah, something that's... in more rural areas could kind of understand. Um, so that's a brilliant preview. Well, just... well even, even on Kieran's point, I, I believe from his own club cameras, you know, if they're training at 8 o'clock, uh, Kieran makes it just at 8 o'clock straight from the farm. And, and, and uh, that's, his, that's his life and fair play to him. But he's absolutely brilliant at hurler. And when I was talking about the aerial thing and catching the ball in the air, he is probably one of the best exponents of it in the county. So uh, if if he can get back into inter-county level, he'd be a huge addition. Brilliant stuff. And just to mention that uh, any clubs out there looking to do any fundraising this year, our game are doing club live uh, fundraisers. So it'll be a live virtual show hosted on Zoom. We'll provide a ticketing platform. Uh, we'll sell raffle tickets for you as well. Promote whatever local businesses want to support you. So email events at ourgame.ie.